Hey, welcome to Upstate 8, and I'm your host, Katrina Lee. We are on every Thursday from 8 o'clock till 9 on RochesterFreeRadio.com. We are WRFZLP, Rochester Free Radio 106.3. And you can check us out. We are on YouTube. We are Upstate Eats Media at Yahoo.com online. We are Upstate Eats on Yahoo or not Yahoo YouTube. We are Instagram Upstate um, under tag New York Eats, and we are Upstate Eats on Facebook. So check us out. Talk to us. If you want to be on the show? Inbox us. Um, we take great food pictures. We have a good following. It's a good time. You can come on the show, get interviewed, talk about anything upgoing. Um, it could be wine. It could be a uh, cider. I mean, it could be cupcakes or anything dealing with food or the palate for taste. So I've been really busy and I do a lot of stuff, but um, lots have happened. Um, I have this international yums box that comes in and this month was France. So with my producer later on, we're going to try some of the candy samples and some of the stuff and talk about it upcoming not this moment because he's not prepared and he doesn't know what it is so I can't just throw it down his mouth and be like eat it eat it eat it but I'd like to and um today the weather was beautiful it was like no jacket day so I'm just reminding everyone about things in our area especially Buffalo because a lot of Rochesterians go out to Buffalo along with uh, Erie Pennsylvania people who are our main listener base because of how I'm established and all the places and people I know So, nine events to plan your trip around Buffalo is Food Truck Tuesday. For seven months a year, Tuesday evenings in Larkin Square are the tastiest place in Buffalo. Burritos, barbecue, mac and cheese, milkshakes, Food Truck Tuesday has 50 trucks. And one of the largest weekly food truck rodeos in the country. So, that's coming up. That's April. That's not really far away. March, April, May, like literally a month away. So, Pride, Pride Festival, lots of gays, lots of lesbians, lots of festivity. They usually know the best dress, the best way to eat. Everyone wants a gay best friend, you know, so on. But uh, that's upcoming. It's a two-mile parade or dancing at Pride Festival at Canal Side. It's one of the best annual community events dealing with food. Um, ironically, listen, Food Magazine. Um, Allentown Art Festival has a lot of stuff going on. Um, art, obviously, and food and taste. That's usually in June. And then there's Juneteenth. It's an African-American culture, tradition, music, cuisine, the largest in the nation in Buffalo. It's its 45th year this year. And it uh, has over 100 vendors. Found the kickoff parade, and they enjoyed two days of outdoor activities around Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Um, I never went to that. Uh, there's a big shooting inside or in front of Martin Luther King Jr. Park, but it's really close to Best Street, which is where you have the Science Museum of Buffalo, which is impressive, along with the Dewey Sci- um, Science Museum School magnet, where, like, if you're really smart, your kids go there. So it can't be that bad, that bad but um, I like trying different food from all over. Just heard different stuff about it, and I'm not willing. I mean, I'm willing. I'm going to go this year for sure and see what happens. But Taste of Buffalo is usually in July. Cobblestone Live is in the historic Cobblestone District of Buffalo. Three outdoor stages, Buffalo Ironworks, Lockhouse Distillery, lots of beer, wine, cider, food trucks, games, and activities for all ages. That sounds like fun. You know, who doesn't want that? The Erie County Fair is coming up not far away. Lots of different food, alligator, anything you can eat. Carnival rides. The National Buffalo Wing Festival. That's the end of August. And you have the Borderland Music and Arts Festival. And that's actually at Knox Farm State Park in East Aurora. Being East Aurorian and from East Aurora, I have never been there. I have heard about it, but I just... It's got local and national acts take the stage, fine craft breweries, pour glass, and local restaurants to shout incredible eats, while local woodworkers, glass blowers, and smiths show off their meticulous skills. Never done that, but I've been to all the bars and restaurants in East Aurora, and I finally established a name for myself there. Everyone knows me. I have my own mug at the Bar Bill, 1747 Princess. I've had it for a long time. They opened a new location of the Bar Bill from East Aurora, so and Clarence. So as Barbell North is called, it doesn't have the same vibe yet. It was brandly new, and um, it just has like a regular bar vibe, like just like brick walls, the same like uh, liquor store signs and stuff around. 
doesn't have like the hospitality or vibe of like the old original one that's been there forever and that we all fell in love with which is kind of tragic but they have the opportunity to remake it they don't have a mug club or anything yet but supposedly they were going to put one in there so that's a negative and why i wouldn't suggest per se jumping on the bandwagon for that place but we're going to cut a song break and we'll talk about kenny's cove which isn't too far from there along with other restaurants i visited this week hey welcome back it's beyond the pole sorry it's up to eight with your host katrina lee beyond the pole is actually on on thursdays tonight at 10 o'clock and i host both with an hour gap so that's why i got a little confused but we are going to talk about the Universal Yums Box, and they welcome you this month to France. So we're going to let the Universal Yum Box adventure begin. So we're opening the Yum Bag. So it's a visit to the Bonbon bon Shop, as it says. No trip to France is complete without a visit or two or three to local Bonbon bon Shop. Bonbon bon is a French word for candy, literally translating to good good. The extra good name couldn't be more fitting for this grumptious selection of French tweets. Our advice save around because in the blink of eye these bonbons will be gone gone. So we had three types of taste. One is um mind you I'm not French so they could be pronounced a little wrong. Tetis brulees which is a tropical peach tea and cola flavored chews with a sour filling. Now they say warn yourself this super sour sweet is about to blow your mind and they're not being dramatic. The candies Tete's release literally translates to burnt heads. So don't worry, they won't actually set your head on fire, obviously. But their extreme sour filling is more intense than the sour candies you're probably used to, like Sour Patch Kids, Warheads, Cry Babies. And with tangy flavors like peach tea, tropical fruit, and zingy cola, they provide an exclusively mouthwatering experience. Pop one in your mouth and decide for yourself. Um... Are we being dramatic, or do these sour candies live up to their name? So, Gary and I are going to try these sour candies right now. As I read the next one and see if we want to run do, to the bathroom and spit it out. Do or... I have one here? Is this one yeah, of the ones I have? Yeah, it's a circle one, the one in the orange wrapper. Orange wrapper, wrapper. Yeah. okay. Yeah, we got um, one. Oh, okay. Oh, it's got something that popped out in the you middle. You bite it. It's chewy. Um, it has good radio. sounds like chewing, you know? I know it is. It's, um, it's pretty gross. I can't well, imagine buying and eating these. It just got real intense. It's too. really sour. I love sour stuff. Like it's really yeah, disgusting. Yeah, more than I do. Oh yeah. Um. All right. Wow. Yeah. Well, I won't be ordering these from France. No. No. Mm. Oh. Wow. My God, I almost want alcohol to flush this out. Like, ugh. <laughs> But then there is caramels con flor de sal. So they're technically translated to salted butter caramels. Salted butter caramel is classic, right? Because in there is popularity, you might think so. But the flavor is less than 50 years old. <clears throat> it was only in 1977 that the French confectioner, Henri Leroux, set out to make a new candy using the famous sea butter from the Brittany le- region. After three months of experimentation, he debuted the salted butter caramel, and it was an instant hit. By 1980, it was voted the country's best candy. By 2000, high-end American restaurants caught wind of the flavor. By 2008, it had gone totally mainstream with both haagen and Starbucks debuting salted caramel products. With this bonbon, you'll taste the salted caramel that started it all and find out for yourself why the French layer is here to stay. And that actually sounds good. So this one's the one that clear plastic. Uh no, it's the one that's like a taffy looking one. Tattoos, oh, yeah, brulee yeah, yeah. or something. I'm doing smaller sections of this too. So. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, you're probably horrified at the last one. No, just so that way I get done quicker, we can talk. Um, this doesn't taste like salted caramel. Mm. It I don't reminds know. me of a taffy. It's got a weird taste. It doesn't remind me of that. At all. Me. It you doesn't gotta... remind me of the candy or salted or anything. Like, yeah. 
You gotta remember too. It reminds is, me of a fruit or something. This is to show how things are different in other countries. They ate some of ours. They'd probably be doing the same reactions. Yeah. Because they're not used to it. Because like that first it's one, it's got kind a very like, fruity taste. That first one kind of like exploded on you, and like it. It was horrifying. <laughs> I know, but it was like it was. It like, was legit it, it sour was, though. They it was an honest. event when you ate it. All of a sudden, boom! It like powered out at you. It was legit um sour. Yeah. In the wrong ways. Well, <laughs> I couldn't. I don't know that I salted it caramel. I thought would taste like caramel, yeah, like to a me it, toffee, it's just like, and have yeah. like a salted, like a chocolate salted taste. And it does mm-hmm. not. Um, yep. I know extreme. It tastes like fruit, kind of like it tastes like something I've had, but it's not that. You know, it was kind of extreme. I actually like the first one better. I do Maybe. like the first one better. Yeah, um, right. this one yeah. I don't like. Yep. For salted butter caramel, yeah. I know it's kind of plain. So, oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't salted butter caramels. Not yet, because it looks like it's no, got the I word messed butter. Up. No, it's got, we had. You... It's got the word, it's spelled out B-R-U-L-E-E-S. And it's, no, it no, I like messed up. I'm butter. sorry, all yeah. you listeners. No, what we just had was sour cola bars. Now, that makes sense, because it seems like it was like, tastes like a cola. Wow. I was like, there's something wrong. Wow, yeah, that's and So, yeah, the sour cola bars in 1948, World War II is over, and France is liberated. And per thanks to American troops, the Coca-Cola company decides to introduce Coke to the French market, hoping to capitalize on America's good standing with France. What do you think happened next? Did the French even try it? Did they spit it out in disgust? Did they relish it with wide-eyed wonder? It is all the above. Coach it, Coach, <laughs> Coke's French debut got all sorts of reactions. Some folks poured it in the gutter, some spit it out, some sipped it with a smile. Despite the initial mixed reactions, France has still come to love the drink today, and it's just as popular as it is in the U.S. Keep it all in mind, you sample the cola candy. Your first reaction is sourness, and you might want to spit out, but we think you'll end up smiling, even though it's pucker lips. That's what we ate. I, I actually, was like, it doesn't even taste like salted butter or caramel. I actually I'm had, like, another, I don't understand. had another little piece of it, and I agree 100%. <laughs> no, cola. now I'm like, cola. it doesn't taste right there. It's not like yeah. that. It's something I remember tasting, but... Now I'm actually going to try the caramels con floor to sell, the salted butter caramels. The little round one? Yes, uh, yes, the one that actually isn't labeled. And how, like when I wasn't, couldn't eat these as a kid because I had braces, my mom was like, it'll stick in your teeth and rip out your braces. But yeah, um, they taste like salted butter caramels, so I did mess up on that. <laughs> I'm going to be picking my teeth out for hours. I know, right? That's like real caramel. Everything that was there is like sticky to the teeth. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's a big France thing. Well, that, the that's French good like it, but yeah, no, that I makes could. more sense. It tastes like salted butter. I'm like, this doesn't even taste like it. What is this taste? And I'm like trying to think of it, and I realized when I looked down, sour cola bars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the Coke one I could leave, but the other two I could actually sit there and eat. It wouldn't bother me at all. I would enjoy it. Yeah, the Coke one is a little uh, weird. You have to really like Coca Cola. Yeah. I had some coffee candies recently, and it kind of did the same thing. It was like you're tasting coffee, and it, I liked it, but you know, yeah, it was some different. people might not like that taste. So we're gonna kind of do a quick song break, and then we are gonna try um, tube uh, Grenoter. Hey, welcome back. We are Upstate Eats, and I'm your host, Katrina Lee. We're WRFC 106.3, RochesterFreeRadio.com. You can find me on Upstate Eats on YouTube. Or Upstate Eats on Facebook, along with other social media factors and fashions. But we just tried, after the show, a break, um, Sibel Tube uh, Brignoter Fromage. So they're called Cheese Flavored Tube Snacks. So what it addresses on Universal Eats is... um. We have shocking news. Are you sitting down? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, here it goes. In France, people don't really snack. Gasp. We know, we know, it sounds crazy, right? But let's be clear, the French still enjoy munching on chips, crisps, and crackers. They just save them for a pre-dinner course called the aperitif, like appetizer. So during this starter course, French folks gather for a casual conversation, a glass of wine, and a savory snack designed to whet appetites for the meal to come. The cheesy grignoter, French for nibble, in your box, is made especially for the occasion. Feel free to do as the French do and save this snack for the right before dinner. Just be careful not to spoil the main course. Well, um, I was pretty disappointed with it. I thought it was kind of repulsive. 
I am glad that uh, my family didn't call that an appetizer and skip the actual appetizer mm -hmm. of like French onion soup or caprese salad or something I'd actually like. How do you feel, Gary, for this tube? I didn't enjoy it much. It kind of was a little stale. And after you were done, you kind of like tasted the cheesy part of I it. I still but... taste it in my mouth. Yeah, when you're done, I think you do. But I really, I, I wasn't my, I'm not a fan. Yeah, no, I have no desire to buy it. There's other ones that are so good. Like I tried, and um, I can't even talk about it or share it on the radio because I ate all of it. But Sabelle Chips Savoir Vinaigre, <laughs> and as Bordeaux is famous for his vineyards, and Paris is famous for his high-end restaurants. But what about the city of Orleans, lying directly between the two? Hints. Look at the chips. Yup, it's famous for vinegar. Between the 13th and 17th centuries. Countless barrels of wine would go sour on its way to Bordeaux in Paris. Rather than take the loss, savvy merchants in Orleans sold the spoiled wine as vinegar, hence the name vinegar from the French vinaigre, meaning sour wine. The merchant's decision turned out to be anything but sour, and the Orleans vinegar industry exploded. Today, Orleans vinegar is used across France for anything from cleaning supplies to vinaigrettes to perfectly crunchy, delightfully tangy potato chips like these. You gotta admit, vinegar chips sound much better than sour wine chips. I didn't realize it was sour wine until just reading that, but um, it was so good I ate the whole bag within five minutes. Yeah, you liked that one. We didn't uh, get I love any. vinegar. It we didn't was, get it. <laughs> it was, no, no, no one got it because I uh -huh. ate it all because it was so good and I'm greedy. But that's what this and is And I paid about. the money for the box, so right. I mean, it's my thing, so screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Is what this is all about. Yeah, know? so the eyes. thing of the month is that you can make a croquet madam, which is called Mr. Crunch, and they're crispy ham and cheese sandwiches, which first appeared on French cafe menus on the start of the 20th century. They're a staple of local cuisine, and you might call them a French power couple. So it's pretty easy to make. Ten tablespoons of unsalted butter, two tablespoons flour, one half and one third cup milk, pinch of salt, pinch of nutmeg, eight slices country bed, eight thin slices French ham, four thin slices gear cheese, and four eggs. Pre-oven to 300, whisk away, call, so, and coat, you know, the whole sauce and coat. Melt remaining butter on the sandwiches, toast, and transfer sandwiches to a baking sheet to the oven. Easy. You can make it. So, basically, it's just toast with an egg on it. Yeah. Simple. My son, that's impressive, and that's their, like, country's main recipe. Yeah, I'm into that. I like that sort of stuff. Yeah. So next month, I'm kind of excited that it's going to be some mango Sichuan pepper chocolate. Sweet mango, spicy pepper, and rich dark chocolate. I don't know. We'll have to see. Apple salted butter caramel biscuits and mustard and honey potato chips. It's, oh. like, the clue to the next month's month. They won't tell you. Mm. So next month, an expedition is in store. Down to the Rio, we'll search from shore to shore, not for critters, but for something even more rare, chilies, passion fruits, and yums beyond compare. So it's chili? No, I thought that was before and I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, when I thought it was actually like chili Argentina or something, it was uh, Spain. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so nope. it's usually we not something out. with chili that obvious, they make it get a little yeah. more complicated. They said all about this Dolly thing and it really is Dolly's from France, mm. or not France, from Spain. So we're going to cut back and then start wrapping up. We are up to eat and we're going to get a song break. It's Beyond the Pole at 10 o'clock tonight. My other radio show, we're up to eat. Nice we had lamb lollipops with mint jelly. Um, and they had them blackened because I love salt and it was more seasoned. That was delicious. And the French onion soup was amazing. That's in Clarence. They have fish tanks and uh, saltwater tanks that are pretty cool and big. That's what they're known for. They're known for their seafood. And then I went to Salvatore's, and I had the lobster bisque, which is to die for. They bring out a plate, and they put lobster pieces in it, and then they bring out the bisque, and they pour it over, so it's plated in front of you. Oh, my God. It was unbelievable. So think about it when you have Lent on um, things you can eat. Obviously, you're not going to eat the lamb lollipops. You can eat that. They have specials on uh, Sunday, Monday with burgers that are cheaper. But um, the lobster bisque was to die for. The spirit room where I ate at today is also a good, friendly place to go for Lent time on Fridays because it's Fish Fridays for all you Catholics out there. 
But the spirit room had this shrimp and grits. It did have chorizo, which you could probably pick out and pretend it wasn't your food. But the grits is really filling. And it had jalapeno, the chorizo. It was just really savory. And then shrimp on top is a smaller plate. But, I mean, you feel stuffed to the gill after it. It's a really cool environment and atmosphere. They have, like, Ouija boards. You can do tarot card readings to what you should drink. There's mediums usually sit in the corner. There's all different stuff. They have demonstration. They have activities. They have even burlesque shows. Like, the spirit room is happening. It's one of a kind. There's nothing like that in Buffalo. Nothing like that in Erie. Nothing like that in Syracuse. It's a Rochesterian thing. 420 last year, too. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, I don't even know what was going on that day, so. Yeah. Uh, then they had Knox. Um, which I went, and I usually go there, so I talk about it a lot. I had the Hufflepuff favorite drink ever. They took off the menu, and I made them bring it back just for me because I'm special. But uh, we had the Pan's Labyrinth, as usual, my other favorite, which is a cheese charcuterie. And it's got all different. Like, it's got olives, which I don't eat, but it's got, like, this berry compote, which is stellar. And then it's got um, baguettes. And all different cheese types that change regularly um, per season or whatever they want. It's not weekly. But cheese um, curds and stuff like that. And so that was fabulous. And then prior to coming to the show, we went to Stone and Seed Cidery, which is right in the Hungerford building. Which is pretty cool because they used to like work with fruit here. And all that stuff. And it was like a fruit mill. What was it, Gary? Like a fruit... Uh. Well, I really don't know. It was something with fruit and yeah. transporting fruit. It was well, this like whole, a fruit factory. This whole building was was on the juice, making the sweetener for juice. And yeah. it looks like this was a a uh, thing for that. We'll put it on the, fa- the page. I'll Google it. I got yeah. a picture because when I went to Theodore Roosevelt inaugural site, they had a thing for the hunger fruit and it showed the fruit. So I like took a picture and I wanted to like post it up in the radio station and stuff. So I'll like reiterate and look into it. But yeah, that's what we did. Um, It was absolutely fabulous. I started a new job at Russell's. I'm super excited. It's way better restaurant, way higher end. Um, I really upgraded super super happy out with the old and with the new um that's us to eat all the way and we're gonna get ready for the next show thank you and catch me at 10 o'clock be on the bowl